Welcome to Finish Your Race, bringing you real success strategies for empowering your life. Here's your host, Don Armstrong. Good morning. Welcome to my weekly Finish Your Race podcast series. I got to let you know, this is the first time that I've done one of these recordings outdoors. So if you hear birds chirping, (laughs) and if you hear cars driving by and honking, that's what's going on. Um, It's going to be it's going to be great. Yeah, there may be fans shouting. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But I am your weekly host, Don Armstrong, speaker, author and survivor. So I want to thank you for joining me today, and I really hope that you'll join me every single week because I'm always going to have interesting, entertaining topics and people on sharing the moment with me. Finish Your Race is the title of my podcast, and that's really about your life's journey and the chapters in the story of your journey. My goal is to help individuals navigate through the twists and turns that life throws at all of us. And I'm going to use what I call the three A's. The three A's are adversity, attitude, and action as guides for each podcast. These were really significant for me in my cancer journey. And and I actually believe that the three A's and how they're managed by you are significant in all of our lives. I mean, we all have to deal with the three A's at one time or another. Each week, I'm going to offer uplifting conversations with extraordinary individuals who share their personal stories of triumph, hope, encouragement, and transformation in the face of their adversity, offering strategies to help you finish your race. I'm excited today to have you hear my guest. She's been a longtime friend of mine. She's been on an inspiring, encouraging journey focused on helping others live their best life. And I kind of laugh as I'm looking at my guest because this is actually one of the titles from a conference that we (laughs) did together. She goes by many titles. I mean, she's not just one person. She's many people. She's got two doctor titles, including a Ph.D. in biology. That's her first doctor title. But she's also more recently known as Dr. T., (laughs) And I'm going to ask her to explain both of these doctor roles. She's a certified nutritionist. She's a speaker, events director, coach, consultant, and cancer survivor. Most recently, she's added author to her many accomplishments. The name of the book is WFPB20, which is the whole food-based, whole food, plant-based nutrition plan, right? And she's developed a food is medicine five day lifestyle plan. She's going to talk about all that. And I got to tell you that just in going through her introduction, I'm I'm actually I'm absolutely exhausted. So am I. I'm more. I'm I'm more. I'm I'm, I'm worn out. I'm I'm trying to figure out when you sleep. I don't know if you do sleep, but uh, help me welcome. Patricia R. Thompson, mm, right? Thank you. PhD, Doctor T. So, welcome this morning. <laughs> welcome. I'm so happy to be here. Well, I'm happy. I'm happy to have you. There's so many facets to who you are and how you got to where you're at. So, uh, I want you to take a couple of minutes and talk to the, the listeners about who you are and, and how in the world you got to where we're sitting today. That's a good question. <laughs> yeah, it is a good question. I think so. Um, so do you want me to say that now? Yes, I do. <laughs> or it's later. Your, no, it's your turn. It's your turn. <laughs> it's my turn. I'm just sitting here enjoying listening to you. I was no. like, oh, good. That's it. I'm Tell done. me a story, I'm Don. done with the introduction. <laughs> I'm done with the introduction. It's up to you. No, I mean, um, just a long, winding road. You know, I started out, uh, you know, getting my doctorate in biology and environmental toxicology, thinking that that's what I was going to do for the rest of my life, and started working for the Environmental Protection Agency, and then... Um, the Department of Health and Protecting Human Health. And I thought, okay, this is it. And then I got bored Um, because with government, it's just a slow process where I think everybody's familiar with that. And I just, I saw a job for um, an executive director for an environmental education organization in a paper. And I thought, oh my gosh, I would like love to do that. And so that's where my nonprofit started. I jumped out of a very well-paying job to a basically wholly practically not paying job and then just kind of work my way up through nonprofit and just have loved you know adopting whatever mission it was for those organizations and then um, at some point in time I think it was you know during my cancer diagnosis I just realized that 
there's something more out there for me. And um, I launched my uh, my business that really it's based on health and wellness. Wow, that means so you just in in a couple sentences that's a mouthful. I mean, you went from the private world mm-hmm. to the nonprofit world, mm-hmm. and then into your own business world. I mean, mm-hmm. that's that's a lot. That's a lot to do. It is a lot, but you know, you only live life once. You know, and you just gotta and and everything. You know, every change I've, I've done is like there's a hand in my back pushing me. And it's I can't even fight it. Because sometimes yeah. I'll ignore it and it just keeps pushing harder. And I'm like, okay, I'm supposed to go this way. And then I just follow it. Right. It's just a weird, I know that's a weird story and maybe it's like a little woo-woo, but it really does happen to me. Yeah, and no, and it's, it's, really, it's really not a weird story. I mean, um, I'm a firm believer that we are the sum total of everywhere we've been. Mm-hmm. And that all the way up to today. I mean, mm-hmm. whatever brought you to this point yeah. has been, if it's the if it's the hand guiding mm-hmm. you or pushing you or whatever it is, um, that things lead us to be who we are, mm-hmm. you know, in the world. But for you, I know that this was uh, all heart led. I mean, you always felt it in your gut mm-hmm. or in your heart, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, it's you know, whatever moves me um, emotionally and spiritually, um, that's the direction I go in. And, you know, it's interesting when you talk about um, a journey, because right now what I'm doing is helping people on their health and wellness journey. And I, I, I consider that like meeting people where they're at. Um, I think in the beginning when I was helping people with their nutrition, um, I was trying to bring them to where I was. So when I work with people um, re- in coaching people and teaching people about health and wellness and really looking at where they're at and meeting them where they are, I think that's really important because if you try to push everybody to exactly where you are, they haven't taken the same journey as you. You know, I got here through many twists and turns. I can't expect somebody to just take a direct line to where I'm at. So I have to meet people where they are and identify, you know, easy steps for them to take to lead them down that path. Um, and that's what that's what I do. Everything is aimed at that, as meeting people where they are and coaching them in the direction that they want to go. And, and let, again, letting your heart lead you. And I, mm-hmm. and I, I know, you know, if people are listening, they're thinking, well, this was easy for her. But I... I got to believe that, like all of us, you face some adversity. I think adversity kind of finds us, it kind of tracks with us, and it's something that happens to all of us at one time or another. And I'm a firm believer, because of my journey with cancer, that how we react to the adversity really determines our future, really determines our legacy, if you want to get to a word as big as that. What are some of the adversities that you faced? I mean, you talked about the business journey. You talked mm-hmm. about the cancer journey. But mm-hmm. what are some that really come to mind? So I have to I have to say, um, in the beginning for my career, and even in even in graduate school, um, and I was in a field that wasn't traditionally uh, women based. So I had to kind of fight my way through because there was a lot of guys. There were graduate students that were guys. And I always felt like I had to prove myself twice in doing anything, doing presentations, doing research um, and everything. And so I kind of I'm very stubborn, too. I, I realize in my later years, I've noticed that, that about that's, you. It's a little bit of a and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of aggressive, too. So, like, if I want something, I'm going to keep pushing for it. And so that's how I made my way through the Ph.D. program despite like I felt like I was in one of those video games with all these things coming at me and I'm, I'm ducking and covering it. And the same thing goes for um, nonprofits and just, you know, being a woman in the, in the working world is difficult and for any, any woman. But, you know, what I say to everybody is just if you believe in what you're doing and you feel that you're going about it with the right intention, then no obstacle can get in your way that you can't overcome. And I don't get here by myself. I get here through my friends like you, um, and you're my only friend. <laughs> I pay you very <laughs> wow, well, though, don't great. I? Yeah. You get that check every nice. month. And then family and just you know, surrounding yourselves with people that are encouraging you and encourage you, you along the way. And that's how I get to wherever I am. I never get there by myself. It's always this 
group of people, you know, my peeps or whatever. Yeah. So in in spite of the adversity, there's a there's a, a part in the in my book, uh, finish your race, mm-hmm. where I talk about people following their passion mm-hmm. and um, trying to do it kind of on a part time basis up front, so you mm-hmm. don't put all your eggs into one basket. And I mean, you kind of live that process. You knew that you had some challenges ahead but you kind of did it on a part-time basis until you felt mm-hmm. comfortable enough to really step out is mm-hmm. that does that sound yeah right? i mean i think um i wanted to do it full-time but i was afraid and then i, I think my cancer journey pushed me to the other side because then i all of a sudden i realized well wait a minute i'm only going to be here once this isn't a rehearsal if i want to do something just if i really truly believe it, it and plus, I made a plan as well, like a financial plan to say, okay, how much money do I have that I could um, that can support me for how many months before I need to start making some money? And that's what I encourage people to do is like, don't just jump into it like, you know, there are people that open businesses and never really, I never really think, hi, Mr. Motorcycle, never really think about, you know, oh, I need to make sure that I can make a living um, and then they fail. And then they blame it on the business, but it's not really. It's the intent and making sure that you have the right prep. You, you've mentioned a couple times without going into a lot of depth. I mean, one of the biggest adversities that we can all have, and that's a that's a that's an illness that might mm-hmm. take our life. You mm-hmm. mentioned cancer. Mm-hmm. I mean, you were working for a nonprofit focused on blood cancer yeah. research, right, and, and helping people survive. Mm-hmm. What, what was that moment like, and how did you get through that? Well, I have to say it was kind of surreal um, to be diagnosed because I had been eating and living so healthy for you know several years before that. Um, but I, I, I really thank my lucky stars that I had been doing that because what would have happened if I hadn't really fed my body some all those nourishing foods and nutrients to help fight off other cancer cells. So my cancer was very treatable and very curable and and basically, I didn't even have have to have the extensive treatment that most people have because it was so small and so contained. So I counted myself as lucky, and I said, "Okay, that's it. That's a sign to say, all right, the road's clear. Move ahead with right. your dream and your hopes, and go forward with it." Yeah, perfect segue into attitude. Mm-hmm. You know, I believe that attitude is a game changer. Mm-hmm. I know that during my cancer journey that my attitude was probably the difference between life and death for me. Oh, I believe it for you, yes. So uh, attitude can really change things. It Mm -hmm. can actually move you in the right direction. Your attitude, particularly if it's a positive attitude, can really impact your outcome uh, in a very positive way. Talk about your attitude and the impact it had on on all your journeys, Mm -hmm. not not just your cancer journey, but your journeys through business, mm-hmm. through through school, through business, through your cancer. I mean, how has it? How has attitude affected you or helped you? I mean, I think um, part attitude is genetic in a way. You may inherit your disposition from you know your parents. Um, and I think my father was fairly positive, and my mother was fairly positive. And I just, I've always been. I yes, I get down and I get depressed and I get sad sometimes, or mad or upset. Um, but it doesn't last long for me because I feel very uncomfortable being in those emotions. That's interesting. It's very uncomfortable for me to have like anger or depression. I'm just like, uh, it's like I'm wearing the wrong suit. And so I quickly get out of it and force myself to, there's like a little thing in me that goes, come on, go for a walk. Come on, go get a massage. Come on, go listen to some good music. Go meditate. Go eat some good foods or whatever. So I try that and I think that's just in me. You know, I don't, I don't know if I really have anything to do with it. It's just instinct. It's just instinct. It's just like get out of this. I, I can't do this. Sometimes I, you know, used to like to be sad for a little while. You know, if a, I broke up with somebody and I was kind of depressed, it was kind of um, therapeutic to you know get real down and you know. But it'll last me a couple of weeks if I was going through a really bad breakup, um, and then I just pull myself up and go. 
Okay, I can only go up from here. But kind of a kind of a restarting, a regenerating yeah. type yeah. of a feel thing. Feel like a phoenix. Yeah, like exactly. I, 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 love, I love I love I love yeah, I love rising right. from the ashes. Right, I do. Right. I love it. I love it. Like when I get right. when I used to get like, oh man, nothing can get worse. I'm like, oh good, that can only get better. Right. So let's go. Oh, I like that. That's yeah, the way I think. Can, yeah, that that's a twist on the attitude. Nothing <laughs> can get worse. Oh no, it can't. Get, <laughs> yeah. It can get better. Right. It can get better. Right. right. I, I just you know I just always look at the bright side. You know, let's look on the positive side yes i do angst about things and i do worry that's not you know i'm not saying that but um you have to have a positive attitude if you want to do your own business or if you want to do your own you know chart your own course you have to think positive because you really don't get anything out of thinking negative the only thing it just it just brings you down thinking positive it brings you places you know it gets you places absolutely so in your current chapter, and I like to talk about, you know, our journey being mm-hmm. a story with a lot of chapters. Mm-hmm. In your current chapter, mm-hmm. as a small business owner, author, conference director, I mean, was there a turning point where your attitude kind of jolted you into, I mean, let's let's go. I mean, I've had some things that have kind of helped me. In fact, I know some things mm-hmm. have helped Like COVID had an yeah. impact, didn't it? Mm-hmm. It had a major impact because I was putting on this giant in-person conference i had you know almost 400 people sign up i had 40 something speakers all booked ready to go um in april 2020 and in march 2020 we all know what happened and i had to shut everything down i had to refund everybody their money and cancel everything and then what i decided to do was wait a minute i have all these speakers already they're ready to go why don't i just put this on a virtual platform and then turn that around um, to a virtual platform and and then sold tickets for that. So I made up some of the, the difference and it was a you know a really great success and I was really proud of that. Um, but you, you were also an inspiration to me too because I think we both discovered we were writing a book at the same, better but at the same time that we had been writing it. And then you finished yours much first, quicker than I did. You finished your race and that really inspired me. So it inspired me to keep going. And I kept going because of that, and I thank you for that. And then, you know, now I published that book, which what I did was I just set a deadline. I said, this is it. You, whatever you have written, that's going in. And you kept saying to me, you're not going to write everything. Pick some pieces and include it in your book. You could write it in your next one. Yeah, so, you got another book in. Yeah. yeah. So exactly. um, so we got it done. We got we got her, we get her done. We get her, get her done. <laughs> get her done. Yeah, that's, so that's I'm happy awesome. about that. Yeah. So talk a little bit about the book, the title of the book. and It's a WFPB 20, which stands for Whole Food Plant Based 20. It's a long title, so we decided to use an acronym, which is probably hard for anybody to say. But right underneath the title is Whole Food Plant Based. So basically, it takes you through um, the steps of, so my partner, Brooke Ali, she wrote Vegan 20. So it's all like um, 20 steps, 20 ways, 20 things. It's, that's, we wanted to do it like in a fun way. So she wrote a book about being vegan, actually what it means, how to do it. Um, and then I took it to the next step where it's really um, more nutritionally based. So you take veganism and then you clean up a lot of the food that you can eat when you're a vegan. You can eat big bag potato chips. Um, but clean it up and uh, really feed your cells nu- nutrition. So I have a lot of uh, medical stuff in the book saying why you should eat a certain way. Um, and lots of, we have recipes. Brooke uh, Ali actually did the recipes in my book. And um, and so it just came out. So you have one of the first copies. I know, I'm excited. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for sharing one of your first copies with me. Um, Again, a great segue into the word action. Mm-hmm. Um, to me, action is a catalyst that really makes an idea a reality. You know, a, a goal is mm-hmm. nothing but words on paper. If you put it on paper, it, it won't do anything. It won't mean anything mm-hmm. unless you take action, unless you move forward. Um, through my cancer journey, um, I always wanted to find my my normal again. I wanted mm-hmm. to get back to my normal again. Mm-hmm. And for me, working out was a big part of my mm-hmm. my pre-cancer life. And so I decided after my um, my stem cell transplant, my recovery from that, that I wanted to run a marathon of all things, right? <laughs> and so <laughs> since, things. since that first marathon, I've run another 21 marathons. But in oh, all gosh. of them, all of them, you have to take the first step. Mm-hmm. And that first step is mm-hmm. really action. You are undoubtedly I think that's a word 
I could, it could be. Could we'll, be. We'll, make we'll just say I think it, it is. is. But you are you are an action person, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you took action in all these. Yeah, things. I mean now you know now that you put it that way, you know, maybe I do, maybe I am. Yeah. So I mean, you had you had to get to the point where, and maybe it's again, it, it, maybe for some people it's more conscious than others, and mm-hmm. other people like you, I think it's just you kind of have those conversations internally where you say. Okay, let's just mm-hmm. get beyond this. Mm-hmm. Does that sound like? Does that sound like you? Yeah, I think. Um, I mean, COVID kind of uh, put a uh, you know a uh, stopper in all of that, but I kept pushing it out, and we kept doing things online, which wasn't a comfortable um, venue for me, but we did it anyway. And then once I realized that it was lifting, then I said, okay, we're going to do. I can see the writing on the wall. People are going to want to come in in. in person so let's start planning our events in person so um so i guess i kind of yeah I, i'm kind of motivated internally and i i can only plan so long but then i have to like it's just like it makes me uncomfortable just to sit with the plan for very long i like to just okay let's try it out we don't have anything to lose you know right. just throw it out there and see what happens right um so i like I like to test and, and, you know, put things out there. So you, you used a word early on um, that I think that I think stops a lot of people. You used the word fear mm-hmm. and that maybe fear was, was kind of being thrown up in front of you during some of these uh, thoughtful, challenging moments that you had. I mean, was action a factor in getting beyond the fear? Yeah, definitely. Because um, fear can really um, paralyze you. And people, I think, also use it as an excuse not to do things so i can only do fear for so long that's another uncomfortable feeling i don't like feeling that so i'll move away from that and kind of justify like okay so what is really the risk what is really going on here and then kind of move past that and force myself to do something about it yeah it's it's kind of the old pros and cons talk Mm -hmm. a little bit more about that you kind of do the in in your mind you're doing pros and cons and why wouldn't i move forward the risk assessment yeah, the risk is I, I, yeah. I was trained like that as a scientist to evaluate the risk to human life using like a toxic substance and say, okay, so how really toxic is this to a human and how much do they need to eat or consume or be exposed to to cause these kinds of effects? And so then we whittle it down and figure out, okay, only this amount is a very, very low risk. So that's how I do, that's how I run nonprofits also. What's the risk? If we do this event or we do this thing, um, what's the risk? What's the you know? What's the payoff? So when something's reduced down to a small amount of risk, I say, okay, let's go forward. Nothing. You can't do anything without risk, right? You can't even get out of bed without a risk. True. I know for me. True. You know, I true. can fall. I can <laughs> right, step right. on something very sharp or yeah, yeah. whatever, um, or pull my back or whatever. So you have to evaluate the risks when you're doing it and, and, and get over the fear. Yeah, and you ask the question, what's the worst thing that could happen? Can happen, right. You know, that's right. As right. I as I can I can do something that's kind of out of my comfort zone. Yeah. But the benefit could be yes. you know, could be significant. And I and I suggest to people step out of your comfort zone. I think COVID made me do that because I had to go embrace technology, which isn't always my friend. And I, I learned a lot. You know, now I learn, I've learned so much. I can't say that I'm a techno savvy, but I, I can get through stuff now. So I, I encourage people to step out of your comfort zone, overcome your fear, and, you know, think positive. Train your brain. You can train your brain to think positive. Um, and it really does work. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah I love that. I love that. Um, kind of pulling the adversity, attitude, and action kind of all together. Um, what's some advice that you could give to the listeners to keep moving forward? I think it's important that we just don't think forward, but we also mm-hmm. keep moving forward. Mm-hmm. I think we get stuck a lot, but what's some advice you could give the listener in terms of, of moving forward every day? So I think having, having a plan for each day, you know, just write like two things that you want to get done and, and do, I like to do that the night before. Because then when you wake up, it's already there. You don't have to spend that day thinking, oh, what should I do today? But it's nice to do it like right before you go to bed, just write it down or type it on your phone. Like I want I'm going to, you know, I'm going to go to the dentist finally. You know, I've been avoiding that. Or I'm going to send that email to such and such about something. And just write that down. Just make it small that it's manageable so that you succeed in doing it. Um, you don't want to make a big list 
and then wind up the end of the day have 10 things that you still haven't done but when you can check off two things on your two per two item list it makes you feel really good right. and it really does like give you a positive ring like oh look at that i finished that so that's what i would say start out with like a little to-do list to get you moving and so whatever that project is that you're working on make it specific for that Excellent, excellent. That sounds good. That those those are things that we we can all use. Um, so I want I want to I want to close by talking a little bit more about about what you do. I mean, I really believe that you're the light for so many people that are searching for the best way to uh, to eat oh, and the best so nice. way to survive. I mean, mm -hmm. it, I think we struggle with. Uh, what do we eat and what impact is it going to have on us? Mm -hmm. Am I overweight? How can I maintain my ideal weight if mm -hmm. there is such a thing? So, I mean, talk a little bit more about your book and mm -hmm. about the, the plan that you have. Mm -hmm. And, and um, I mean, uh, how important nutrition is mm -hmm. in kind of everything that we do. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Brooke and I are, are, you know, really reaching out and doing cooking classes, et cetera, and, what, and books and going on a speaking cir circuit and, holding these um, these fairs and events and um, conferences because what we want to do is 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 we try to bring um, the idea of empowerment to people and that the power of your health is in your hands wow. and so that you can control what goes in your mouth right and then helping them identify what are those healthy foods and why are they healthy and what can they do for you so you know if somebody has arthritis what are the best foods that you should be eating what are the things that you should avoid um, if you are a cancer survivor what are the best things that you should be eating what foods should you avoid you know so there's lots of anti uh, can cancer um, foods there's lots of anti-inflammation uh, foods so we talk about that and really empower people to take control of their lives and don't leave it in the hands of somebody else don't be a victim and so that's what we're trying to help people give that power to them and not just food wise but also spiritually mentally physically you know taking care of you because if you don't take care of you nobody's going to do that and when you are healthy and feel good then you can turn around and help others and so we would like to just create that chain. We'll help somebody, and I've seen it. We've helped um, students or attendees or registrants or clients, and they have turned around and helped others, and we love that. Like, that's the chain we want to keep building. Yeah, you, feel, you feel like you're making an impact then. If, yeah. if people are oh, helping yeah. other people, it's like, okay, what I said really did have yeah. an impact. I mean, yeah. I, I watch this woman that healed herself from rheumatoid arthritis just because she attended my five-week program, and she was in bed on tons of drugs and thought that was the rest of her life yeah. and now she's actually featured in my book because now she's just healthy and feeling great and now she's helping others and it just it just it makes me sob yeah. <laughs> really I mean, I mean the word that comes to my mind is choice and yeah we have a choice to yeah overcome an adversity we have a choice to apply a positive attitude yeah. we have a choice to take action yep. but what you're talking about is we all have choices every day and mm -hmm. how we eat mm -hmm and how we take care of ourselves, but we've got to take care of ourselves. Yeah, and, and we look at progress, not perfection. We don't want perfect people. You can't eat perfectly all the time. But for the most times, you can try to eat as healthy as you can. There'll be those times that'll be challenging. And sometimes you'll overcome the challenges and sometimes you won't, but it's not about beating yourself up. Don't feel guilty. It's just taking a step. Just take a step. Right. You know, so just that's step. what I encourage everybody, take exactly. a step towards, exactly. towards a healthier you. All right. So as we kind of kind of wrap this conversation up, I mean, I know that you've always got so much going on. We've been friends for a long time and, and trying to keep up with you is is uh, difficult at best <laughs> because you've got so much going on. But I mean, but what is new? You talked about the book. You, mm -hmm. I think you've got a new another conference coming up. Yep. What's coming up and how can people engage with you? OK, um, well, you could go to my website, www.wellness-20.com. And all of our stuff is on that site. But we have a great um, Green Spark Market and workshops coming up in the Louisville area, North Texas. Um, so I'm assuming that people are going to be listening to this from all around all the, world. the world. So it's Texas. So if you don't live in Texas, then, you know. But anyway, listen to it because it might inspire you to do something in your community. We're bringing all the vegan 
um, businesses together and the community. It's a free event so that they people can explore businesses that really help with sustainability, use green products, um, responsible marketing, and you know vegan food and all that. And just to expose yourself to that so that you can explore safely in a great environment. Um, so that's our first event. We're having another big event in Denton in November. That's going to be an outdoor event. It's probably going to be five times bigger than the one that we're having in August 21st. That's August 21st. This one's November, um, November 13th. And so we're going to be having that up at Denton. And then we're planning a conference for the fall. And we have, and then we're going to be doing a retreat and coaching and all of that. And plus our book, book tour. So we're going around doing cooking demos from our book and selling our books. So is it the best way to find out about all this is on your website, yeah. right? So say your website one more time. www.wellness-20.com. All right. Sounds great. Well, well this has been great. It has been fun, <laughs> Patricia. Thanks so much for coming on with me, for being an inspiration yeah. to, to me and so many other you people. Too. Uh, thanks for kind of leading the way in healthy eating, but really healthy living probably more than mm-hmm. just the eating part of it. Yeah. It's really about your, your overall person. health. Yeah. yeah. So again, thank you, Patricia. That's, uh, that's a wrap for uh, my weekly Finish Your Race podcast. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And if you're looking for a speaker at your next event, Find me on my website at donarmstronglive.com. I'd love to participate in what you're doing and uh, share my message with the folks that you're going to interact with. So until next week, I'm going to like to ask you to finish your race, but not just finish your race. Do it like Patricia's doing it. Finish your race strong. Thanks, and we'll see you next week. You've been listening to Finish Your Race with Don Armstrong. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit finishyourrace.com.